second year PhD student with the Kiel University and uh, at ILL, my academic supervisor is Anja Winter in Kiel University. And uh, I belong to the group of LSS and life science. Uh, and uh, I am, uh, my background is in my molecular biology. And um, my project is about the interaction of prohibiting with uh, an AA proteasis in the membrane, in mitochondrial membrane. So I'm using technique la like uh, neutrophotometry uh, and uh, SANS. Um, my, uh, this is the outline of uh, my talk. Uh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna explain before the electrodipole moment and the standard model, the CP and the T symmetry, the measure uh, of uh, uh, the EDM, the Ramsey method, and what are the principal component of an EDM experiment. And then I'm gonna explain a bit the differences between an EDM experiment performed uh, in, uh, at PSI and at ILL. Uh, the electric dipole moment is given by the distance between a positive and a negative charge. And the magnitude of the electric dipole moment is uh, described by this equation uh, where uh, P is equal to Q that is the distance and the D, uh, sorry, Q that is the charge and D that is the distance. And uh, uh, the net of the force of a dipole in a uniform electric field as shown here is zero, but can be, um, so, uh, can be undergone to um, a torque. Uh, and the torque can be described by P times E. And uh, this is equal to say that the torque is equal to the magnetic moment uh, times B, that is the um, magnetic field. But uh, uh, probably what you are wondering is why I'm talking about uh, electric dipole moment in a neutron, because uh, a neutron have an overall charge of zero. Uh, but uh, what uh, um, uh, the experiment of electric dipole moment in neutron is uh, going to looking for is the charge distribution. And uh, then I will uh, go to explain better, but what is the upper limit that is be studied uh, until, uh, uh, until now is uh, this described here where it is minor of 1.8 times 10 uh, to the power of minus 26. Uh, talking about uh, the um, electric dipole uh, moment, we should uh, before uh, say something about the standard model. Uh, the standard model uh, include the presence of elementical particles like quarks and uh, leptons. Uh, neutron and proton are uh, made of quarks, and uh, in the leptons we can find the electron. Uh, we can uh, found three different uh, generation: the first, the second, and the third generation. But going step by step, in the first generation, we can find the everyday matter. Uh, it is, sorry, the everyday matter is done of uh, the first generation, and uh, this generation have a nuclear spin equal to one half. Uh, when we go to the second and the third generation, they are heavier and heavier, and they have a, a much more tendency to decay. Uh, but the standard model is also describing uh, these forces that are three different uh, category. We can find the stronger nuclear forces, uh, uh, that is the gluon, the electromagnetic force, that is the photon, and the weak forces that are uh, the Z and the W boson. Uh, but what, what we can see from here is that uh, uh, what is missing is the gravitational force. Uh, this is not included in the standard model and is the weakest of these forces. And uh, another key point that you can see from the standard model is uh, the egg bosons, that is a quantum field that provide mass to particles. And uh, uh, in a new physics that would explain uh, the matter and antimatter uh, would also predict uh, an idiom. Uh, now we need to talk a bit about the CP symmetry, talking about the EDM. And as I mentioned before, the neutron have an overall charge equal to zero. And, uh, but uh, um, has, a, has a region that is slightly positive and another region that is slightly negative. And this is giving a, this, uh, give a disequilibrium that can be explained with the evaluation of the CP symmetry. So the charge conjugation symmetry and the parity symmetry. Uh, and explaining a bit uh, each of these symmetry, we can say that the charge symmetry uh, describe the interaction, uh, that, that the interaction are unaffected if all the charge are swept. The time uh, reverse symmetry uh, describe that the interaction work at the same way, backward or forward in time. Uh, 
and the parity symmetry described that the law of physics are indifferent for left and uh, right underneath. And uh, um, in, the, um, in the universe, we can uh, say that the theorem of CPT, so the charge parity and uh, timer reversal symmetry cannot be violated. So this means that you cannot have a violation of all the free of uh, all the these free symmetry at the same time. And what uh, is violated in the EDM is the uh, charity, uh, charge parity symmetry. And what we see over here is a, a bit of the, the explained what I, I said. In the parity symmetry, we have the inversion of the dipole. And uh, in the time uh, reversal symmetry, what uh, uh, is uh, changing is the angular momentum. But the dipole is, uh, uh, is uh, unchanged. Uh, but uh, why is it important to study a neutron EDM? Uh, because uh, it can uh, give uh, answer to several topics. Uh, first of all, it can be a good constraint between the CP and uh, the T uh, symmetry. Um, and they are a powerful uh, constraint for baryogenesis model and give strong constraint for high bosons. And what is explained over here is that in this uh, um, in this picture is that uh, in high energy frontier, the most uh, dominate, the dominating uh, instrument is the Large Hadron Collider. And uh, with, this with this instrument, uh, the mass limit is pushed uh, over uh, what is described from here. But uh, um, with the EDM, you can go to looking for even uh, higher mass, mass scale and with the uh, um, differently from the Large Hydron Collider, you can find a much precise, uh, much more precise um, uh, value to your answer and using much less uh, high energy instrumentation. Uh, but uh, uh, for study, uh, study an EDM, um, mean to evaluate, as I said, the presence of, uh, the presence of a charge distribution along a spin axis and uh, um, a measure of an EDM equal to looking for a linear shift in energy. So if you put a neutron in an electric and the magnetic field, you can see that the, the direction of the electric field is gonna uh, switch. And what uh, is described over, over here is that the frequency and these rep uh, represent the electric and the magnetic um, uh, uh, field is equal to the magnetic component of the system. And this uh, uh, is represent the dipole and the electric field. Um, here is a changing of uh, sign because the changing of the direction. And here it say that uh, uh, what I said that for uh, measure the difference of the frequency is equal to uh, this point here, uh, the dipole uh, times the electric field. So you end up having that uh, in order to measure an ADM, you can measure uh, the per question, the precession frequency. Uh, one of the methods that uh, we need to talk about uh, talking about the EDM is uh, uh, the Ramsey methods. And in presence, uh, in presence of an holding field B0 and uh, another magnetic field B1, uh, in the presence of uh, the neutron that represent your sample, you have that uh, in the step two, the, uh, the neutron spin is going to flip of 90 degree. And uh, in step three, you have the free precession of your neutron spin for uh, some for, for uh, some time and then after that uh, you have that the neutron spin is going to flip again of 90 degree and if you start from a spin up neutron uh, state you will end up having a spin down state and what uh, uh, i'm describing in with this graph is the probability to find the neutron in spin up so here is the probability to find the neutron in spin up and the, here is the frequency so uh, over here you have a um, zero probability to find your neutron in spin up. So you know that uh, in this point, the neutron have a spin down state. And in this point is a, a spin up. But uh, why we need to use uh, an ultra cold, uh, ultra cold neutron in an EDM experiment? We can answer uh, this question using this uh, uncertainty relationship where uh, um, this term is expressing the precision of the measured energy, and this is the observation time. So if we want to increase the precision of the measured energy, we should increase the observation time. And increasing the observation time will give a better sensitivity of free order of magnitude, giving uh, so as lower neutron. Uh, 
um, here I represented uh, the principal uh, point for an EDM experiment, and then I will go into explain a, a better point by point. Um, so this is the UCN sources, uh, so the ultra cold neutron sources, and then uh, the ultra cold neutron need to be polarized. You can do that uh, with a superconductive magnet or a magnetized iron foil. Um, then uh, uh, the polarized neutron is going to be uh, is going to go in the guiding file coil that have the uh, rule of maintain the spin state that you have uh, um, selected and uh, uh, this guiding file coil have to have the property to to reflect but even to be uh, magnetic and then um, the neutron the neutron is going to be inside the magnetic shield where there are few uh, important uh, component that are the procession chamber and the B0 file coil. Uh, the procession chamber is where uh, is going to happen the Ramsey method that we just saw. And uh, then over here is it's not shown, it's gonna, it's gonna be present after. Uh, there is a UCN shutter, so uh, the neutron uh, can go um, out in this direction and uh, down uh, toward the spin analyzer. And this is a, um, simplification, but uh, um, there are uh, two spin analyzer and two UCN detector. This uh, because uh, you can select simultaneously both spin state. So uh, each spin analyzer, spin analyzer can detect one spin state uh, that can be detected uh, with the UCN detector. Uh, this is the procession chamber that I was talking before. Uh, this is the bottom and this is the uh, top uh, conductive material and in the uh, side wall uh, there are some insulating material and uh, as you can see there is a mercury lamp and uh, a photomultiplier detector this is uh, this is because in the uh, procession chamber there is a co-magnetometer that uh, ensures the stability of the magnetic field and now i'm going to explain uh, why uh, so why uh, we need mercury inside the procession chamber? So with the mercury, mercury has an EDM equal to zero and has a, a spin dependent light, uh, light absorption. This means that uh, using a circular polarized light, the mercury atom can transmit or absorb light depending from the spin uh, direction. And these uh, uh, mean that uh, um, use, you can use the precession, uh, precession frequency of a mercury atom for normalize the uh, um, precession frequency of the neutron. And here is an example. Uh, this is the, fre the precession frequency of a neutron. And you see that uh, uh, here the frequency is going up and then uh, is uh, decreasing. And here we have a jump. And what is described in the second, um, this second part is the normalized uh, precession uh, frequency using um, the, the, the mercury, uh, mercury precession frequency. Um, here is just uh, some more detail about how it happened the spin flip. So we uh, saw before that if you have a, a spin and you put this in an holding field and a second magnetic field B1, you will have that the neutron spin will not be aligned anymore with B0 and then will, this will start to process. But uh, how and uh, when happened the spin flip? So if, uh, um, in order to have the spin flip, you need to be in the right frequency at the right strength and you have to be in the right time. And uh, we can um, say that the rotation is proportional to be one times, uh, sorry, to be one and time. And uh, um, also we can also say, Sorry, we can also say that uh, for measure the uh, measuring the area under this uh, part of the graph uh, is equal to measure the frequency. Um, this is the uh, a measure, an experiment of uh, electric dipole moment at PSI, and uh, I'm gonna underline what are the differences between uh, the PSI and the TILL. Um, so one of the first differences is the UCN sources. They are using a solid deuterium and this gives um, faster neutron with respect to the one that uh, is used at ILL. And for this, uh, they uh, is used a five Tesla uh, magnet. This uh, means that they need a much more, a much stronger uh, polar, um, 
polarizing system. And another uh, difference is, is that uh, um, RPSI is used in one cell chamber, and we can see the presence of the commagnetometry at Mercury. And uh, here it is uh, it's possible to see what I was explained before, uh, that uh, uh, once that is happened, the um, Ramsey method inside, so the spin flipped. Uh, the spin flipped, it can go in this direction. This is the, uh, the switch that avoid uh, the spin, the neutron spin to go back in this direction that is uh, the wrong one. But at this point, it can go uh, in this direction where there are the two spin analyzer and the neutron detector. As, as we can see, there are two neutron, uh, two detector for uh, and the two spin analyzer. Um, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, they have a common automatic with Mercury uh, because having just one processing chamber um, is uh, important that they are able that um, is a, that that they can uh, normalize uh, the measure. Uh, this is uh, uh, the instrument at ILL, and this is a big overview. This is the reactor. Um, this is the outer magnetic shield. Uh, shield. This is the uh, clean room. Then uh, here there is the high voltage apparatus. And here is the, uh, the Super Sun um, helium pump system and uh, the Super Sun. And then I will explain later on. Uh, this is the uh, Super Sun as a, a new source of ultra cold neutron at ILL. And uh, what uh, we have to explain is that the cold neutron is going inside in this, uh, in this direction. And inside uh, this part, there is the superfluid helium that converts the cold neutron into a cold neutron. This happens um, due to an inelastic uh, scattering event. And uh, uh, the characteristic of helium is that it's not able to absorb uh, neutron, but uh, uh, you have uh, um, a bit of loss of uh, neutron anyway, because uh, when I go to hit uh, the uh, wall of the tube. So uh, what, uh, um, so sorry, after that, you have the conversion between cold neutron and ultra cold neutron. Uh, the ultra cold neutron is going to be collected in this uh, part, and this is the outlet. And uh, uh, here is uh, represented the, uh, helium, the, the helium sources. And uh, what is uh, important in the second phase is the, mm, the use of magnetic shield that uh, reduce the neutron loss. Um, this is the, the cell that is present at ILL. Instead, that one cell is a double cell. And uh, we can see a central um, high voltage part where produce an equal and anti-parallel electric field. Then are present two cylindrical cells uh, with quartz insulating ring, uh, one and this is the second one, uh, that are filled with a, a common UCN sources. And uh, there are some optical magnetometer with um, uh, mercury and mm, cesium. Uh, this is the UCN guide and detection system. And as uh, I mentioned before, uh, the guiding system need to be in a uh, system that uh, reflect, uh, but is not magnetic. So they are of uh, they are tube of 50 millimeter diameter tube uh, coating with uh, nickel and uh, molybdenum. Um, and uh, um, this is uh, the high voltage apparatus. And this is uh, the processing chamber. And uh, uh, once that the neutron is being flipped in this part, it can go in this direction. This is the uh, the switch that I was mentioning before. And uh, this allow the uh, neutron to go in this direction. And then here we have the spin analyzer, and this is the cascade director, uh, detector. So um, this is uh, uh, the magnetic field shield that is present. And here we can see the double cell. And there is uh, uh, everything, of course, under vacuum. And this is the high voltage insertion. Um, and here the, uh, there are the in, for there are the cylindric shield and file coil, and uh, uh, these are represented the three uh, layer inner magnetic shield. And here are the outer magnetic shield. And uh, I want to uh, conclude with the last uh, two slides, uh, saying that uh, for an ADM experiment. Um, we need a measure that is as much precise as possible, 
and uh, um, in order to increasing uh, the precision of the energy detected in an IDM experiment mean that we are able to increase the sensibility of the measure and uh, um, increase the possibility to answer uh, the main question that, uh, for what it uses EDM. And here, uh, I just want to show as uh, this is the neutron uh, ADM upper limit uh, found over the year. And we can see as uh, in the last uh, 70 uh, here at the moment, uh, the um, sensitivity is being increased of six orders of magnitude. And uh, then I want to give a, a bit of a summary uh, saying that uh, the new physics that include matter and antimatter would, uh, pre um, would predict the EDM. And the EDM are a powerful tool to have a better understanding on topic as uh, CP, T symmetry, baryogenesis, and high bosons. And the, the study uh, measure an EDM is, uh, you, you can measure an EDM measuring the projection frequency and uh, the as I just said, uh, experiment of ADM is aiming to reach uh, much better sensitivity with the, um, along the heels. Uh, and the, the research of uh, a more precise after limit is always ongoing. And then I would like to thank the expert, uh, my supervisor, and uh, Agathe, the other presenter. <laughs>